All right. Aloha, my kako, and thank you for joining us today for Kupa'a Mau, Living the Legacy, with Bonnie Kahapea Tanner and Mahea Lani Triester. Um, thank you so much for joining us. We're so glad you're with us, and <clears throat> I'm so excited to tell you a little bit about these wonderful women that have joined us to share their ike. Let me tell you a little bit first about Kanehuna Moku Voyaging Academy. Kanehuna Moku is a 29 foot double hole sailing canoe. It's a hands on, dynamic, and living classroom for students of all ages, where students become crew and learn all aspects of sailing the canoe, including maritime skills, non instrumental navigation, elemental observations, teamwork, and communication. Kanehuna Moku Voyaging Academy is a nonprofit Hawaii based 501c3 organization. The Academy's mission and purpose is to perpetuate the knowledge of traditional Hawaiian navigation and to provide opportunities for Native Hawaiian students to advance in contemporary ocean based careers through academic, college, and career support. With us today, Bunny Kahapea Tanner was born and raised in Kaneohe, where her love for the ocean began. She got involved with the voyaging canoe Makali'i in 1995 and has been sailing ever since. In 1999, she was a watch captain on Makali'i's historic voyage, a Mau sailing the master home, which took Grandmaster Navigator Pius Mau Pialug home to his community in Micronesia. Following this life-changing experience, Kahapea helped to open Halau Kumana Public Charter School and launched the Va'a Kanehuna Moko in 2002 to share and teach voyaging culture and practices. Today, the nonprofit Kanehuna Moko Voyaging Academy teaches learners of all ages about the Va'a and connects that to college and career opportunities in ocean-based industries. Kahapea holds a BA in Hawaiian Studies, an MS in Counseling Psychology, and an MA in Transformative Learning and Change. Kahapea currently lives in Heia, Oahu, with her husband, Halona Tanner, and daughters, Kailea and Lehia. Mahealani Triester lives in Kaneohe and is the program coordinator for the Papahana Ho'olauna program, which works with schools PK-12. Mahealani first met Kanehuna Moku in 2008 as a kumo at Halau Kumana Charter School and always appreciated the power of the va'a as an outdoor classroom to make learning relevant and meaningful for the students. In 2015, Mahealani joined the crew at KVA to help further their mission and over the years has watched the sailing vessel transform many lives, including her own. She loves the ohana and community that the Va'a helps to build and is so grateful to be a part of this journey. Aloha and welcome, Kahapea and Mahealani. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today. And thank you, ladies, for sharing your ike. I'll turn it over to you. Ohokulea kawahine o mauke kane. Noho pulawa aloa amai o makali'i he keki he kia kahi. Holopu o makali'i i kamoana nui akea, aloa amai o kanehuna moku ka pula pula he kia kahi. Ki aku kamaka i ka ali hilani a uiri mai kamokula. O kualoa ka aina o kane hualani kapali nana e hii. I kiala pono e holoa kuai a ho i mai. Me ka ike o koumua e kaumai nei, e mau mai ka ike a mau loa e. Aloha mai kako and mahalo for joining us today on this Friday afternoon um, in our presentation, Kupa Amau Living the Legacy. Um, Mahe and myself uh, are excited to be here today and just to share a little bit about who we are and what we do and uh, what we feel is our kuleana to um, perpetuating this legacy of voyaging, navigation, and the legacy of our va'a kanehuna moku, makali'i, and of course our Grandmaster Navigator, Papa Mau. 
So aloha. Um, let me see. I want to see change my view so I can see everybody here. Okay, there. And if you don't mind, if you could put in the chat your name and maybe um, where you're from, just so we can kind of get to know who's in our space today, who's on the deck of the Va today, um, that would be great. Um, I think first I'm going to share a little bit about our Mo'okoha, which is what I just shared with you folks, um, our genealogy. And it starts with um, Hokulea. And we honor our voyaging canoe, Hokulea, as our mother, um, as our grandmother, uh, Va'a. And of course, uh, she is the famed canoe of Hawaii, and who is also getting ready to leave on Monday on another voyage to Tahiti. So that's really exciting um, for us to, to see our Tutu Va'a still sailing, still teaching, and, and crossing our oceanic pathways. So we're really excited about that. So we consider Hokulea as our grandmother of Kanehunamoku. And then we have Ohokulea Kawahine O Mau Ke Kane. So Papa Mau, P.S. Mau Piailug um, is our grandmaster navigator and is uh, we consider him to be our grandfather of our Va'a Kane Hunamoku. And of course, uh, many of us know that Papa Mau came to Hawaii uh, in the 70s and he was the first navigator of the Hokula in 1976 uh, on the voyage to Tahiti. And he is credited really with bringing back uh, voyaging and navigation to not only just Hawaii, but to the entire Pacific. And then let's see, we have, of course, this is a, a beautiful image of Hokulea in 1976 on her arrival in Papa Ete Tahiti. And you can see how many people showed up there. It's said to be one of the largest gathering of the native peoples in known history when they came to greet the Hokulea on her first voyage there in, 2000, in, in 1976. And then our Mo'okuaha continues, Noho Pulawa, Aloha Amai. So from that union of Hokulea traveling and taking people under her wings and Papa Mao training the Hawaii um, people in these photos, you can see, of course, on the right hand side there is Nainoa Thompson. And on the left hand side is Shorty Bertelman, two of Papa Mao's um, um, Haumana from very early on, on that first voyage in 1976. So from the activities of Papa Mao and from Hokulea sailing and training, then we get the canoe uh, Makali'i. And Makali'i, <clears throat> he keiki he ke kahi becomes a, is a, the next canoe and it's a single masted canoe. So a little different than Hokulea, which has two uh, mass, Makali has one mass, and was built by two brothers, Shorty Bertelman, who I mentioned earlier, and his brother Clay Bertelman, uh, both Paniolos from the Big Island of Hawaii, Waimea, um, but fell in love with the canoe, Hokulea, and just loved everything about voyaging, really um, were hanaied by Papa Mao as his sons, and they decided that they really wanted a canoe for their own community on the island of Hawaii. And so that was the driving force behind building the canoe Makali'i was to build a community, uh, build a va'a for their community and for their community to have. And then the Armo'oku'auhau continues, Holopu'o Makali'i. So Makali'i makes a few very important uh, voyages early on after her launch in 1995. In 1995, she sails uh, with the Hokulea and Hawaii Loa down to Tahiti, to um, the Marquesas, and then back home to Hawaii. And then in 1999, uh, uh, Clay Bertelman makes a promise to Mao to sail him home to be the first Hawaiian va'a to sail west uh, into Micronesia and take Papa Mao, our precious navigator, home to his own community to be honored. And so in this photo, you see the voyaging canoe Makali'i, and this is right offshore of the island of Sarawa, which is Papa Mao's home. And so the canoe travels in this vast ocean. And because of that, then we, the synergy of all of those things combined um, and traveling on the ocean and training young people becomes the va'a kanehunamoku. And so aloa'a mai o kanehunamoku kapula pula and offspring also a single masted va'a. And that is our kanehunamoku, which is why we're here today to share with you folks. Um, and 
let's see. Ki aku kamaka i ka alihi lani a uili mai ka mokula o kua loa ka aina. So Kanehuna Moku is launched specifically on Oahu at this very special beach, this very special place, Kua Loa. And that is done intentionally as that is also the birthplace of Hokulea. And so um, the canoe, our canoe, Kanehuna Moku's birth sands are the same as Hokulea. And that really ties us into this genealogy, both metaphorically and also physically. And so this mo'okuahau that I shared with you and that we share with all of our students, all of our learners, uh, was created uh, many years ago by our Halau Kumana students, Namahana Baldwin and Kana'i Chak, and then translated into Hawaiian by Kainani Kahaunaile, one of our dear friends and also voyaging sisters of Makali'i. Okay. So I think I'm gonna pass it over to Mahea right now, and she's gonna share a little bit about our programs. Um, I was wondering, Kapea, maybe if we could go back a little bit and you could share a little bit more about Hokulea and like why she was started. Um, and then also a little bit more about your journey um, to Makali'i and how that's transformed your life. And then we can get into our programs a little bit more. Okay, awesome, for sure. So Hokulea, <clears throat> and put any questions you guys might be having in the chat too, and then we can totally address those. But definitely, Hokula started in the 70s. A lot of people don't really remember, um, but it actually started as a project. It was a bicentennial project uh, for to celebrate the United States bicentennial, and each state needed to have a project. And so uh, Hawaii chose Hokulea, and it was really started by um, Herb Kane, uh, who's a Hawaiian historian and artist. Um, ben Finney, who is a anthropologist, and also Tommy Holmes, who's a waterman. And they wanted to prove uh, on this voyage, the 76 voyage, that, that Polynesians and Hawaiians had the intellect and also the natural resources um, available to make two-way voyages from Tahiti to Hawaii and back, or from Hawaii to Tahiti and back. And so that was the purpose of Hokulea. Originally, it was really only intended to be uh, kind of like a one voyage deal. And now look, fast forward um, over 40 years now, and Hokulea is still sailing and still um, tra traversing that uh, ancient pathways. So it's really important. Um, and to see how much she has done over all of these years. So Hokulea was really the catalyst to start things. And if you think back to the 70s, um, that was also the time of the Hawaiian language renaissance, hula renaissance, as well as um, the fight for koho olave and other issues similar to that. So it was really that time of the Hawaiian renaissance that all of these things were happening. And Hokulea was definitely played a major role in that and, and still does today. Um, and then Bao, so you know the canoe is is created um, over looking at uh, historical reference, historical sketches of Hawaiian canoes of old, and they build the canoe made out of mostly modern materials. But what we talk about is we say that the canoe was born without eyes. The canoe was born without eyes because there was no navigator, and there was no navigator within Hawaii, and even in the searches throughout Polynesia. Nobody was able to come forward and say that they could and would navigate the va'a to uh, Tahiti and back. And so, you know, the canoe started sailing, um, but it was born without eyes. And then eventually they were able to come into contact with this uh, man, Mao Piailug. And at the time, you know, he was a pretty young guy. He was in his 40s, but he had already amassed so much knowledge and was regarded as a as a um, master navigator in his own um, home culture in Micronesia. And so when Mao came to Hawaii, he agreed that he would uh, navigate Hokula to Tahiti. And uh, you know, one of the things that he said was he knew that in his own islands that the um, young people were not being interested in learning the ancient ways and learning the culture and learning navigation. So that is one of the reasons why he came to Hawaii to share, even though it was stepping out of his own cultural norms to train people outside of his family and outside of his culture, this really sacred knowledge. And so that's a really important sacrifice that Papa Mao did make um, to Hawaii and to the Pacific 
uh, you know, for decades, for many, many years that he was coming uh, back and forth from home to Hawaii um, and, and throughout the Pacific to share about this, this sacred knowledge. So it's really important, you know, that we honor uh, his legacy. And that's part of what we at Kanehuna Moku Voyaging Academy really um, strive to do and aim to do in, in our small ways that we can. Um, so I guess for me, and I see Mahia kind of going fast forward through the, the slides. Thank you, Mahia, because those are really helpful. Um, I was really lucky to get involved with the Makali in 1995, shortly after their return back from Tahiti uh, through some mutual friends. And, you know, once I step foot on the va, it was like I I never really left. Um, it was kind of a, one of those things where you're not really planning on uh, your life being changed significantly. Um, I was we were in Kona, I was a, just out of college and uh, we were with my friends and we were hanging out in Kona for the Lili Uo Kalani canoe races, which if you're a canoe paddler, you know that that's kind of like a really fun time to have in Kona. So we had drove from Hilo to Kona and we were just up for to have a good fun. And my friend said, uh, uh, well, we gotta drop this, you know, our other friend off at the canoe. And I'm like, oh, what canoe, you know, what is this? What, what do you mean? And so we went down to the Kona, Kailua Kona to the pier and there's Makali tied up and we all get out and my friend gets out. And then I'm like, oh, how do we, you know, I wanna go check that out. How do we get on board? And um, they're like, oh no, that's only for the crew. You know, the canoe was uh, like very sacred and only the crew members could go on. So I was like, oh, okay, okay. And then, you know, we stood there long enough talking story. And then my friend says, well, you know, if you wanna go in the va, you gotta go ask those two guys over there, you know? And she pointed to uh, Clay Bertelman, who was this big kind of scruffy looking, you know, guy. And she, and next to him was this other big guy named Chad Paishan. And I was like, oh, I was kind of a shy person. And I'm like, mm, yeah, no, I am not asking those two guys. They're kind of scary. And so, you know, but we kept standing there talking story, talking story. Eventually they came up to us and Kainani introduced me to them. And then they said, well, you know, what, what are you guys doing? You know, you want to go on the va? And I was like, yeah, 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 I really want to go. And so they said, OK, go ahead, go on the va. And then we ended up spending the rest of the afternoon just sitting on the canoe at the pier, talking story, um, meeting the other crew members. And then when it was kind of getting darker, they're like, well, what are you doing tomorrow? And I'm like, oh, I mean, we're here to have a good time. So I, we're probably gonna go have some fun. And then they said, well, come back at five in the morning. We're gonna go sail to Kiala Kekua. And I was like, oh yeah, I'm all about this. So we went back to our hotel room, we packed our bags and uh, we came back to the canoe, slept on the canoe that night and sailed to Kealakekua uh, the next day. And then that's pretty much how it all went down. And now it's been 25 plus years since then. And uh, I'm happy to say that I'm still part of the Makali'i, still sailing and, um, and it's been a really, huge um, honor and blessing definitely in my life and and even in my family's life to be a part of this ohana so after that you know i was already living on oahu i had gone to school at uh hilo but i had moved back to oahu to do my master's degree in counseling psychology at chaminade so i was like flying back and forth every weekend to big island of course this is in the days when hawaiian air used to have those coupons and you could circle which island you're going to, and then you could just jump on the plane. And it was like 30 bucks, 32.50, you know, it was like affordable. So I would work. I was working at Punanaleo Kuaiahao. I would go to school at night. And then on the weekends, I would jump on the plane Friday after work. And then I would go to Makali every weekend. And then on Sunday night or sometimes Monday morning, fly back to work and did that for a couple of years. And it was just amazing and awesome and learned so much things. And then eventually started planning for the 1999 voyage uh, to Micronesia to take Papa Ma home. And um, so at that point, it was like, quit everything, make sure your schedule's open. Don't let anything hold you back, um, just go. And so we told our captain, you know, myself and many others, 
we did a presentation at the last conference last year called Daughters of Mao, and we talked about our voyage. And um, so Keha Inos, Anoinoi Punua, Kanani Kahonaile, Mahina Paishan, you know, and Pomai Vermin, all, all of us Wahines that was on that voyage, uh, we all pretty much like quit our jobs, uh, which you can do when you're young, you know, you can just kind of do that. Hopefully still living at home, right? So your bills aren't too much, but uh, we quit our jobs and we just committed to being on the whole voyage, which was a 23 years ago, like right now we were sailing in April. So it's kind of cool. Um, and we, we just had this amazing experience with, with um, sailing with our captain um, and navigators, you know, Chad Paishan, uh, Shorty Bertelman, Clay Bertelman, and of course, most, you know, mo most special was um, being able to sail with Mao and really getting to understand um, who he is as a person, um, getting to know his family, how they live, their lifestyle, their culture, and, um, and how proud he was to show, kind of like show off his Hawaii Ohana to his people and to show them what he had been doing and why he had left. Um, so many times to come to Hawaii to share his knowledge. And so it, it was really awesome. And so, you know, after like three and a half, four months of sailing with Mal throughout Micronesia, you know, going to his home, and then uh, our voyage took us all the way up to Guam and Saipan, and, and Saipan was the ending of our trip. Um, you know, it was kind of like, what do we do now? We got to go home. The voyage is over, but we don't want to leave. And we were leaving him behind. And we didn't know if we would, you know, ever see him again, if he was going to come back to Hawaii or if that was going to be it. Um, so it was kind of an emotional time for all of us to say goodbye. And and I remember we asked him, you know, like, you know, what 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 do we do now? What 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 happens from here? And, um, and uh, you know, he, he just told us, he said, you, you guys go home and you teach and you share what you've learned from me. And, and so we came home and uh, it took a while to readjust back to uh, regular life. Uh, many of us went back to school, back to jobs um, and things like that, back to new things. But that was when charter schools were just starting to happen, right? In the late, um, in the late, late 90s and very early 2000s, that's when the charter school movement was happening. And so when I came back home, um, met uh, back with our my voyaging sister, Mahina Paishan, and she was like, oh, you know, this guy, Keola Nakanishi wants to talk to you. He's starting a charter school. So I was like, okay, what is that? I didn't have no idea what charter schools were. And he, so we met down at the fish pond where Mahina was um, getting involved down there at Heia Fish Pond. This is all pre Paipaio Heia kind things. Uh, it was really the beginnings of all of all of these amazing organizations that exist today. And um, so I met Keola Nakanishi down there, and he started telling me about this charter school um, that he was starting, and that he had gotten funding to build a va and to build a classroom. And I was like, oh, what, what is this about a build of a kind of thing? And so he's telling me about the project. And so, uh, you know, I called up my captain, Clay Bertelman, and I said, hey, look, I, I just met this guy and um, he's starting this charter school and he wants to build a va. What do you think? And then Clay Bertelman was like, yes, that's a good project for you. You should do that. And so, you know, that's 20, over 20 years ago now, about 22 years ago. Um, we started this project, Halau Kumana Public Charter School, which still exists today. And then two years later uh, became this va'a uh, pictured here, Kane Hunamoku, our double hull, uh, single masted sailing canoe. And, um, you know, she was really built to be a classroom without walls. Um, she's rigged exactly like Makali'i. Makali'i is rigged almost identical to Hokulea. Um, and so the, the genealogy, you know, and, and also the physical aspects, not just the spiritual, but the physical aspects of sailing and voyaging is passed down. And so the idea was that, you know, if students come and train on Kanehunamoku and then move up to Makali or Hokule or any of the other uh, voyaging canoes throughout the Pacific, that they would feel right at home and know exactly how to operate that canoe. And so now Kanehunamoku is making her 20th year anniversary this November she's going to be 20 years old and um and so 
throughout those 20 years, we've just done so many things now that we kind of reflect back and look at, at the different things that we've done. And we continue to do new things. We just started a brand new program uh, that's happening right now. And uh, I think we'll share a little bit about that a little later. Um, but really all of this is really founded um, upon our kupuna, um, of course, Papa Mao and many other kupuna that have helped us to guide us, um, to give us our eyes again, so that we can see these wonderful things that our kupuna um, have left, left for us to, to um, unsalt as Anakala Eddy would say. And so Mahia, I'm gonna pass it off to you now, unless you have any other things for me to cover right now. No, that's awesome, mahalo. Yeah, so I'm gonna pick it up from here. And I think um, one of the things that I wanna share too is about my journey into the Va'a world, um, which is a little different than Kahapea. And my journey really started as a teacher at Halau Kumana where I taught for seven years. Um, and I had, you know, a lot, a bunch of interaction with Va'a, but it's a project-based school. So each grade had their own project and I was never actually on the Va'a project um, itself. So I wasn't like a super hyper-focused um, on the Va'a. I actually am a very much a uka person. I um, studied La'au Lapa'au for many years. Um, and eventually I landed in sixth grade where we did Ahupua'a. And what I did for that class was really like give all the kids like a little sample of the different projects in the older grades. And so I designed it so that one quarter we would go to the Va'a. And so I'm um, in the later part of my journey at Halau Kumana, I was at the Va'a more often. Um, but I also um, in the later part of my journey at Halau Kumana was just personally going through a lot of really difficult things and teaching became really um, difficult for me. As we all know, teaching can be a very stressful job. Um, and when there's personal things going on, um, also, it can get really difficult. And that's kind of what was happening. And after three years of teaching in the sixth grade, and, you know, really, I did really love the school and I loved my students. I couldn't do it anymore. And I literally quit my job with no other job. Like, so it's kind of similar. I guess Kapia like quit her job and went, you know, to go sailing, but I like quit my job with no job and then had no idea what was I going to do. But DOE has like one month delay pay. So I was like, okay, I got one month to figure this out. And, um, I was looking online and there was this job opening for Kane Hunamoku. And I'm like, well, I guess I'll apply for that. And I did. And I, you know, I got a call from um, one of our admin and they offered the job to me. And I, I took the job, you know, of course, knowing a, a bunch about Va'a already, but also knowing like ocean is not my thing, right? But we're gonna do this for a little bit. Um, and I love Kaha Pe'a, she's a really, she was a friend, she was a mentor, and I knew that it could be a good like, you know, temporary thing for me to do until I could figure out what I was gonna do with my life. And um, I got, rescued by Kane Hunamoku, basically. I always consider it like, oh, I was kind of drowning in what was happening with me. And here comes Kane Hunamoku with Kahapea on board. And she's like, Mahia, come, jump on. And I was like, okay, I'm drowning. So yes, please help me. And um, now six years, I don't even, can't even count. Maybe now I've been here seven years later. Um, I have really grown in my own ike in ocean things and with the va'a and I myself um, just have learned a lot learned a lot about who I am and um, my own personal strengths and so um, like my bio said the canoe has really is really a place of 
respite and healing and transformation. And I think a, a lot of our crew has come through here for the same reasons, or not the same exact reasons, but you know, in times of transition or times of need, um, a lot of our students come that way as well. And um, the canoe is a family. And you know, we're talking about Mo'oku Auhau and really um, I'm so appreciative of this ohana that I've been gifted um, through my work here at Kanehunamoku. And I think over the years, um, you know, we have on this slide here is another part of our mo'oku aho oli and it's ikiala pono e holoaku ai aho imai, right? So how do we travel on this path in life, um, you know, in a pono way? What does that mean, right? But as we travel, how do we continue to come back to our foundation, to ho'i mai, um, to our home, right? And the va'a is our home. And all the things that we learn on the va'a is part of our, becomes our values. Um, and so I think like many different cultural practices, it's really about a way of life. Um, and the va'a has taught me uh, a lot of these things. And so we have a saying, think va'a, and it's like, how is our life? How is my life? How can I live my life like I'm on the va'a? Or how can we malama our aina, you know, like we malama our va'a? And so um, I think that's really like, think va'a is a foundation of how we create programming in our community. The va'a is the center piece of it all. And it's from what the va'a teaches that we can share um, those things. And so um, a little bit about our programming as we move forward. Um, so Mo'oku, we started with Mo'oku Ahau because that's just a foundation for us. It's our foundational teaching. And we're just so passionate about sharing this knowledge of our kupuna and really proud to be connected to these primary sources um, and blessed that we can still experience that right and tap into this knowledge and everything that we do in the community with our schools is really to honor this legacy that was left um, by by these kupuna and that are is continuing to pe be perpetuated by our va'a practitioners today um, and so just a little quick slide right here with some of the kupuna that kaha pe'a um, talked about a little bit um, and so here on our slide, we have some of our foundational kupuna, Uncle Eddie Ka'anana up in the top left corner. Of course, Captain Clay Bertelman, who we've talked about a little bit. Um, Kumu John Keola Lake, who was uh, the, first kumu, the first person to bless our canoe as she went into the water. Um, David Kavika Lyman, who was a professional mariner and a harbor pilot and um, is also part of why we do um, maritime here at Kanehunamoku and then of course Papa Mao. And I think that um, staying grounded in the past um, is also what we give to our students, right? Grounding the students in this legacy and helping them to trust the teachings of those that came before them. And when you have that trust, you can build confidence in who you are as a Kanaka. And, help you to live pono in this life and as we move forward and pass that on to the next generation and there's this quote from Papa Mao that I really love and the quote goes um, the Polynesians used to navigate the way we do today without instruments or charts they had faith in the words of their fathers this is what we call courage with this courage you can travel anywhere in the world and never be lost because I have faith in the words of my ancestors, I am a navigator. And I think that, um, yeah, that's what we're really trying to create our little navigators, you know, what metaphorically, but also if they wanna be a navigator, that opportunity is open for them. Um, and um, they're really a source of inspiration for all of us. And then of course, connecting with our living resources today. So these are some of our mentors who continue to work with um, Kanehunamoku and the students. Um, starting in the upper left-hand side, we have 
Captain Chad Paishan, co-navigator, scary burly man who Kahapea said she had to ask permission, although he's really such a sweet man. I, I, I feel special when I'm around him always. Um, Uncle Kaipo Pomeikai, uh, Captain Pomeikai, who is a retired um, captain for Sauce Brothers. Um, Uncle Leighton Seu, who is our board president, but also a retired chief engineer for Matson. Um, Uncle Shorty Bertelman, Po Navigator. Uh, Esalikupi Placito, who is Papa Mao's son, um, who we've had the pleasure of getting to work with, having our students work with. Today, we're gonna learn the Micronesian Star Compass and both Papa Mao and his son Placito have worked with our students over the years to teach these things. Um, Placito also helped a project that we had mm -hmm. years ago to build um, Micronesia, a Micronesian canoe, um, which we did in partnership with several organizations here on Oahu. And then of course, Oh, and then there's Uncle Maka. So going around, Uncle um, Atwood Makanani, uh, OG uh, Hokulea member who really has contributed a lot to Kanehuna Moku as well and taught us a lot about, um, you know, Kupuna. I feel like he is really connected to Kupuna and has reminded us the importance of that and how we can look at our keiki like Kupuna. Um, and then, of course, our va'a that our va'a continue to teach us all the time. Hokulea maka, tutu hoku, mama maka li'i, and then our kanehuna moku, who we teach our students is their mama, right? And when you become a student of ours, you become a part of our family. Um, and I think that's really empowering for our students. So um, just a quick brief um, synopsis of some of the programs that we run. Um, so our Papahana Ho'olana program is our school and community engagement program, and this is uh, basically our teaching of traditional va'a knowledge, um, not only at the va'a itself, but also taking it into the classroom. So you can see here this little first grader who drew, drew this amazing picture of Kanehunamoku um, based on his learning. He's got all the parts that he learned, ka'ele, yako, pola, kia, even the pe'a is the correct way. Um, and so our school community programs over the years, we've done a lot. We do a lot of different experiences. We share with our ohana. So we host our ohana at the um, canoe as well. Up here in the left-hand corner, you see one of our um, longtime Waiohole school ohana there with all the keiki. Um, of course, the field trips to the canoe. And then um, we also do a lot of voyaging with our students um, out here in Kaneohe Bay or Kawaha Okamano. And so there's a couple of photos in there as well of us doing some voyages. Um, and I think over the years, you know, we, we do a lot of different um, types of experiences from one time touches to more in depth learning. And over the years, we've really shifted towards doing more um, deeper learning um, in order to kind of deepen the students' knowledge, but also just their connection and confidence. Um, and I think that consistent and understanding that with any practice that you want to do, consistency and discipline is important, right? And so um, the one-time touches are great. Getting that experience is really great. But if you really want to get into a practice, that consistency that discipline to do the things you need to do, the sacrifices that you might need to make in order to follow that discipline, right? Those are all part of growing in knowledge. Um, and Kapea kind of shared her experience with that as well. So I think that this experience, going to the va'a um, really grounds the students in their own identity in, the, in place, in, their, in Hawaii. It allows different types of learners to thrive, um, gives students confidence um, as they see their own knowledge grow, and just they experience lots of opportunities for leadership and community building. And so, you know, the va'a practice for us really goes beyond just the canoe. Um, another one of our programs is Halau Holo Moana 
program, which is our youth leadership and maritime industry training program. Um, we've done eight cohorts over the years of juniors and seniors. And this, not only do we teach students um, va'a traditions and introduce them to uh, va'a practitioners, but also a big part of that is introducing them to careers in the maritime industry and college, our vocational pathways to get into that career. Because I think it's also important that people know that when you love, have a passion for a practice or you have a passion for the ocean, you can create a career and a lifestyle around that passion. Yeah, we don't have to give up those passions so that we can make a living. And so the maritime industry really provides a very lucrative opportunity for students to um, be able to continue to live and work here in Hawaii. As we know, living here is getting expensive. So um, yeah, that's our program. And also, um, you know, some of the opportunities has gotten many of our students into the industry over the eight years already. We have a number of students who are working on research vessels, who are third mates on mats and ships. Um, we got tugboat, tugboat workers. Um, and then we got a bunch of uh, students who are in the program, pro vocational programs, going through the programs, and then more that are hoping to get into those programs. And so it's been a really successful program trying to get also our Native Hawaiians back out on the water because that's changed a lot over the years as well. Um, I think um, majority of the workers are not even local here in Hawaii uh, who on the water. And so that's also part of why we promote the maritime industry. Um, okay, next. Okay, so another program we do is our Oihana Holomoana program, which is our teacher training and curriculum development because our little canoe can only house so many people. So the more that we can train teachers to teach these things as well, the bigger our community grows and the more opportunities students have to connect with the canoe. Um, and so we've created a, a lot of curriculum, some of it that's available on our website. Um, we created some children's books with curriculum and then we just finished our very first PDE3, which is a four credit course for teachers. And um, that was an awesome experience. And we continue to try to find ways to connect with teachers um, in hopes that they can bring the canoe to the classroom. And then this is the program Kahapea mentioned. We just started a brand new program. I was with these guys all morning and now they're out sailing without me out on the water. Um, but this is our adult intern training program called Ku Pa'amau, Living the Legacy. Um, and I think um, it's our first experience, but wow, we, we had so many applicants and because of the grant parameters, we could only take three, but we ended up taking eight and found ways to like figure out either how to pay them because it is a paid internship, but also we have people who are willing to volunteer without pay. And that for me is really speaks to how much people are interested in this practice. Um, but again, I think a lot of these young adults are in a period of transition, right? So the va'a is where they landed. And I, and I think um, that speaks to a lot of what the va'a can do. And I'm really looking forward to seeing where these community voyagers continue after this. Um, we already have one that's gonna be sailing on Hikianalia this upcoming um, voyage that they're getting started on. And so um, super great opportunities. And I think, um, you know, for anybody who is interested in the practice, it's really about finding those opportunities and getting in there, you know, making it like, I want this, right? How am I gonna do this? And so for those guys who couldn't get paid, they're like, I don't care. I still wanna learn this stuff, right? So they're in, they're in our program and they're getting the experience and are really growing from that. So um, I think, you know, finding a community, finding a va'a in your community and seeing if you can volunteer, how you can help. Um, and then of course, like 
beyond that is that va'a just in general, you can incorporate so much of those practices into your life. And so that's also a way to perpetuate va'a is not only through being on the va'a, but also perpetuating and teaching the skills, the concepts, and very importantly, the values that the va'a can teach. Um, so, and I think, oh, okay. And so even during COVID, right, we still were able to teach our students. And I think that being able to be with our students in kind of like an isolated period for the students to be able to be with us, for us to be able to be with them was super important. Um, and, um, and also something that one of our va'a ohana said, which I thought was really important is that um, our va'as also need time to rest. And so this time of um, COVID and being apart from one another also gave our canoes an opportunity to rest. And I think that's a really good message for ourselves as well, um, is making sure that we find our own time to heal and to rest um, because we work really hard all the time. So um, such an important thing for our people. Um, yeah. Okay, let's see, what's next? Oh, oh yeah, so this is like, it's crazy. I mean, I've been here for seven years and then at Halal Kumana for seven years. So that's 14 years. But it's so crazy to think of just how much this little canoe has accomplished in 20 years. And there's so many successes. And of course, our most important are happy keiki. And now I'm adding happy adults, right? Because so important, We're, we need to be happy too. And we need to translate that down to our students. So I really love my captain, Kahapea. She's so awesome because I think those are things she values. And so I, I don't ever feel afraid to ask for like those kind of times when I need rest or I need help and um, are my va'a family, right? And I think that building a family is, helps us to be happy. So um, we love having their smiles and energy on the canoe and in the classroom. Um, as I mentioned, we published four children books. Uh, one is about the maritime industry, about Uncle Kaipo Pomeka'i and his journey to become a tugboat captain. Uh, we also have a book about our genealogy, a book about uh, canoe plants written in conjunction with our Halau Kumana students. And then our final book, Oka Ipu Kahunua, which is about understanding time and space through a Hawaiian lens. Um, and then uh, We've, we have a movie about our Halau Holo Moana program called Voyage into the Depths of Kanaloa, which was featured in an international film festival uh, when it first came out. Um, and then we just have all, all these, you know, Haumana who are going into the maritime industry, um, even becoming lifeguards, because that's part of our Halau Holo Moana program as well. We've got a couple of them who are becoming lifeguards, becoming researchers, um, you know, like a marine biologist. So it's just been an awesome experience um, being here and watching what the canoe can do. So, um, yeah. So that's our little bit of history. And I think I'm wondering, we're gonna open up the floor for just for this history part. If there's any questions, questions from you guys, we'd love to answer any questions. Anything out there? Okay, so I, I do have a direct message and one of the messages are books um, are available online. You can order them online on our website, kanehunamoku.org. And if you look from our curriculum, um, there's a drop down to the books and you can find the different titles there and a link to purchase them. However, if you are interested, if you're a teacher or you work with children, a librarian, um, or your bookstore, we do offer wholesale prices as well. And in that case, you're gonna wanna reach out um, to, a, either to myself, which is 
myhealani@kanehunamoku.org. Our, our general email is info at um, They're also available at Namea Hawaii, um, at the store in Windward, Manaika Oivi. I think um, the bookstore in Hilo, basically books, that's it. They have, they have those available as well. Um, yeah. Cool. Any other questions? For Kaha's history, history questions? No? Okay. Um, so if there are no questions, we're going to take a quick break. But on your break, you have a kuleana because we're actually going to get into the practitioner side a little bit and do a little bit of teaching. So today we've got two things going on. We got, um, we're going to do a little bit of basic um, Marlin Spike, our learning our knots. Um, and working with kaula and then so if you have any type of kaula this is the time for you to grab it we want everybody it doesn't have to look fancy like mine it can be a shoelace it can be your phone cord something kaula ish um please grab that um and then if you want to take notes um, we will also be talking about the pafu which is the micronesian star compass um and so paper and writing utensils <clears throat> And of course, always bring an open heart and mind for learning. Cool. Okay, so take a five minute break. Krista, is that good? Five minutes? How's our timing going? Yeah, sounds good. So it's one o'clock, we have an hour left. Let's come back at what's well, 1255. So let's come back at one o'clock. Okay, let's come back at one o'clock. Perfect. Maha. Yes. Yes, everybody. Awesome. Okay, excellent. Um, so to get started with Kaula, if um, people could type in the chat why Kaula is so important to the canoe. Go, type some Manao in the chat. Why is kaula so important to, to the canoe? <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Connie, what a Moku Voyaging Academy. <sighs> yes. Okay, so we got it keeps the va'a together. What else does the kaula do? Okay, I got a, it holds fast the rigging and symbolizes the ties that bind the crew together. That was a private message, direct message. So I'm just reading it out. It controls the sales. Excellent. Yeah. And then how about just Kaula in general, like beyond the canoe, why is Kaula so important in different practices? What are some places we see Kaula being used in other practices? Maybe not this kind of kaula, but in a traditional sense, right? Upena, so for fishing, fishing nets. Hey, yeah, so that's a little, um, a game that we can play to learn different things and different mo'olelo. Safety measures, hale, pa'u, pa your clothing. Yeah, awesome. Lay making, absolutely. Pico, life, hola. Yeah, kaula is just such a powerful tool. And um, I think it's really important that when we teach about kaula for us, we teach that it is so important. And therefore, we treat kaula with respect, right? Like a living thing that provides us with so much. And that without kaula, we couldn't have the canoe. Your kupuna couldn't have gotten here, right? So like that's how important kaula is. And it really is a metaphor for binding us together and binding our kupuna with us at all times, right? So um, 
Oh, I love that entanglement as in trauma are the need for ho'oponopono, yeah? So there's so much metaphor too in kaula. And so like one of the things that we teach is that um, kaula is a tool, it's not a toy. Um, and of course there are rules for kaula that we wanna go over with the kids, like not, you know, you don't swing them around, you know, all that kind of stuff, you know, whack your friend because it's a tool. Would you do that with a hammer? Would you do that with a wrench? Absolutely not, right? And so just like how, even though kaula seems demure, that it's, you know, not super strong, it's not going to hurt you, we all know different, right? Based on how it's used, kaula can definitely hurt you if you're not paying attention. And so it's really important that we have that awareness about kaula, um, on all the level, on all those different levels. So we're gonna teach, try to teach you guys. I only gotta, maybe we might not get through all three, but we're gonna try to teach three basic knots. Um, and I'm gonna use my fancy, whatever. So let's try this out. Give me a moment. Here we go. Okay. Okay. Here now I'm gonna do this. You can all see my cat when I do that. All right. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> okay, so um, I got my kaula here and we're gonna start with a figure eight knot. And in Hawaiian, this is called hi pu'u valu. So if you can say that out loud to yourself, actually everyone unmute and say it out loud together. I know it sounds crazy, but everyone say hi pu'u valu. Hi pu'u valu. I love it. Thank you. So, um, the hipu'u valu is a stopper knot. That's its function. And so um, on the canoe, it's actually used on every lashing. At the end of every lashing, we have a figure eight knot. Um, it's also used on our sheet lines, um, which our, our jib sheet lines, which goes to our jib sail. And then, of course, we, we use it so it doesn't come out of the block that it's um, tied tied onto, and so um, I'm gonna teach you guys how to do a figure eight. And so there's a couple ways that we teach it. Um, so we're gonna start off with a little loop right here. You can just call this our mom. This is our mom. Hi, mom. <laughs> and we're gonna take one side. This is gonna be our working end, and we're gonna bring it around towards us. And then you're gonna wrap it around the back. So it's like we're hugging our mom, hug your mom all the way around. And then when you get to the front, you're gonna take that working in and you're gonna stick it through the loop. Like kiss, kiss your mom, love you mom, love you mama makali'i. And then you hooky or pull and you got your figure eight. Yep, and it should look like an eight, Ooh, this way. Here we go, cool, okay. Now, the key though, because this is a stopper knot, one of the keys to this typically is we wanna try to actually get it on the end of our kaula, as closest to the end as possible. So if you got it the first time, we're gonna try it again. So again, we're gonna make a little loop here, right? And we're gonna put it around the front, around the back, and then we're gonna stick it through the puka. And then we're gonna hooky. Hello, okay, mine's a little funky. Let me try that again. <laughs> okay, so I have, so for me, one of the kupua that represents kaula is kana. Um, and there's a whole mo'olelo about kana that you can find in Fornander. It's also in that red book, Hawaii Island Legends. And this mo'olelo, I always say that me and kana are still becoming friends because sometimes I struggle with kaula. Um, some people are just really good at it and some people it takes practice and that's me, so. So how's that, we got that? Good with the figure eight knot, everybody? If you can, um, let me know in the chat if you're, you got it, I got it. Figure eight, hi pu'u valu, how you guys doing? Just let me know, I got it good something to let me know in the chat that we're ready to move on or if you want me to do it again say do it again
Good, I got a thumbs up. Perfect, okay, okay, get them, okay. Got a couple, okay, good. Okay, so we're gonna move on. Oh, okay, let's do it again, one more time. So we're gonna do it one more time for the masses. Um, and I'm gonna close this. Okay, so another way that we teach, if you work with little kids, one of the ways that we teach is, is actually doing it on the, actually right on the table. So we're gonna make a little candy cane, we call it sometimes, make a little candy cane here, okay? And then we're gonna pick up one side, we're gonna go over that one. And we're to pick up the other side now and go over that, uh, that one. And then here's our working end. And we're gonna take that and stick it through the top. Okay, and then there's our figure eight. Cool. Okay, next knot. So the next knot we're gonna do is called a square knot. It's also known as a reef knot. And this one is called he pu'u pahu. I'll say it again, and then all of you will unmute and say it. He pu'u pahu. He pu'u pahu. He pu'u pahu. He pu'u pahu. Love it. Um, so maybe we can guess what he pu'u means, like right off the bat. Any guesses what he pu'u means now that we've done two knots? Not. It means not perfect. So he pu'u is not, and then pahu is like a box, right? Like a pahu drum. Um, and so we're basically making like a box with the kaula. And the, this function of this knot is to tie two ends of a line of equal diameter together, okay? It's not a secure knot, so we're not tying it for security. But it's um, one of the places that, one of the ways it's used is to reef in the sail, which means to decrease the area of the sail. And so um, we don't use it often on, we don't really reef our sail in on Kane Hunamoku, um, but on some of the bigger canoes, they do use this uh, not to do that. Um, and reefing in the sail, you know, would just change the area. And so it changes the amount of, um, wind that you're catching in your sail. Okay, so for this one, this time, we got two working ends. Actually, we're actually gonna have one working end. I'm gonna actually mainly use the red one, okay? So we're gonna take the right, the right side and it's gonna go right over left, okay? The one that, the, the one you just put over, that's the one that's gonna go around. Okay, now we're gonna go left over right, but it's the same guy, that same red guy is moving. And that one is gonna go around and through the puka like this. And then you're gonna hooky all four like this. Okay, and then you know it's right is if you can slide it. And our homana really love that. They love seeing the sliding, okay. So let's try that one more time. So really we have one working end. Luckily I have this lovely um, color coded kaula today. Um, so again, we're gonna take the right over left. That one's gonna go around and through. And then you're gonna do left over right. And that one will go around and through, and then you're gonna hook you. Now, if I went opposite, this is what's gonna happen. You guys see what happened? It doesn't, it's not sitting flat. And when I try to do this thing, it doesn't happen. Okay, so we call this a granny knot sometimes. I don't know why, <laughs> why do you call it a granny knot? Cause I don't even know. I think that's the real name for it. Oh, that's the real name for when you don't do the right square knot. Yeah, it's, it's called a granny knot. Her, oh, now I know. <laughs> Learning and growing in my practice all the time. All right, cool. Okay, one more time, a little faster. Right over left, around, left over right, around. And if you want a challenge, you can always do it with your eyes closed. 
You can do it behind your back. Yeah, these are things that we encourage our students to do as we get um, more advanced. And one of the reasons is like, maybe you have to tie this in the dark. Can you tie it in the dark? Hopefully you have your headlamp, you know, when you're on the canoe and you don't need to tie it in the dark, but you never know. And so it's always like good to be able to do these without looking as well. Okay, shall I do one more knot, Kahas, or you want to get on with? Okay, we're going to do our last one, which is a hard one, but it's also used very frequently on the canoe. And that's because it's a knot that you can trust with your life. Um, it's that secure. And so this knot is called a bowline, um, spelled bowline, B-O-W-L-I-N-E. And um, in Hawaiian, it's called kapolina. And kapolina is basically like a transliteration Bowling, Capolina, yeah, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so this one I might have to pull this up just a little bit, let's see, all right. Okay, so for this one, one of the places the kids, we there's lots of places we use it on the canoe. So to tie the head of the jib sail um, to the jib halyard, we use a bowling. To tie the jib sheet lines to the blocks, we use a bowline. But the most popular one that the kids remember is tying your shower bucket. So on the canoe, when you voyage, right, in order to shower, that bucket got to go into the ocean. You got to scoop up water and you got to bring it up. And that's how you shower. If you don't tie your bowline right, you're going to lose one bucket. And then pull hole. Either you got to find another, but then also your bucket is like in the Pacific Ocean and that's really sad. So please tie your bowl in correctly. We've lost buckets on voyage because the kids never tie them right. So um, yeah, then we have to use the compost bucket for showering. I mean, just, you know, just joking, but for real. Okay, so for this one, okay. So this one is to create a secure loop at the end of a line. That's its function secure loop at the end of the line. And we're gonna start with this draped over your hand, right? So you got some in front and you got some in back. I'm right-handed. So I have my drape on my left hand because I'm gonna use my right hand to move. Um, if you're left-handed, I can try it the other way, but just try. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually put our hands like this, okay? And we're gonna pinch our kaula and then we're going to turn our hand back the other way. So what we call this is like, like you're starting a car, right? So now what you should have is a loop where the front comes down or comes on top and down. Okay. The one that's coming around and down in the front. So I'm going to just use my finger, my thumb like this to pinch it. Okay. I'm going to take that one that's hanging down in the front. Hold on. I'm about to freeze here. Okay. And we're going to take that and it's going to go through this loop from the back. So it's going to puka out just a little bit. You're going to go around the back of the other color around the tree, back of the tree. And then you're going to come back through the circle where you started. You're going to pinch, pinch, and you're going to pull this top one. Okay. And basically that's what you did was, that was the loop that you created, okay? And um, one of the things for us, there's different ways to tie a bowl in, but for us, oops, there's my cat again. For us, for us we always want this um, tail to be on the inside. Um, to make it even more secure, we tie a half hitch. So your tail needs to be, about at least halfway down your loop. And then we're going to wrap it around right next door and pull it through the, the little loop you made. And you can pull it up. And then that's called a half hitch to help make it more secure. Okay. Um, so we'll try that one more time. I'll do it a little closer so you guys can see. So Bolin is like, they use a different type of bowling, but a bowling is also what a mountain climber uses to like secure themselves to their rigging, to their whatever, that belay line. Yeah, so it's like really secure. Um, 
Okay, so one more time, we got it draped here, some in front, some in back. We'll put our hands like this and start your car. Take that little front tail. It's gonna come out from the back, out of the hole, like a rat coming out of the hole. It's gonna run around the tree, the back of the tree, and it's gonna go back where it came from. And then you're gonna pinch the two sides and pull. And then you got your bowling. Okay. And with this, the tighter you pull, the tighter it's gonna get. And you can put an, all this pressure on your bowling. And, you, and when you try to take it out, it might seem like, oh, it got so tight, but it's actually this little loop right here. You can bend it and then your bowling will come out really easily. Cool. Okay, so I'm going to stop share and I'm going to actually share this really fast so you guys can see and if you want to get any of your information written down. So Hipu'uvalu, let's just review, is a figure eight. It's a stop or not. And here you can see it at the end of our lashing on one of our yaku. And here are our students on one of their voyages. And this is our jib sheet line. And at the end of this line, there's a figure eight because this little device right here is like a pulley system. And when that line goes through the pulley system, so you can see the figure eight hanging right here by the railing. Yeah, you don't want that line. If anything were to happen, if a big wind were to come or whatever, right? You don't want that line getting out of the pulley system. And that's what the figure eight is for, is to stop it from getting out. Um, same thing with the lashing, even though that bugger is so tight, you know, like not, you know, like that thing to start unraveling, right? So you want to make sure you tie a figure eight. Um, here's our hipu'u valu, our square, I mean, hipu'u pahu, our square knot. Um, so to tie two lines of the same diameter together, of course, to reef in the sail, uh, we use it to tie our, close the sail bag on our canoe. Um, but this is Hikianalia. And so they're actually reefing the sail down here is where all those uh, square knots. So you can see them bringing the sail down like this, kind of scrunching it together. And then they'll use that to, uh, tie, to secure the sail or reef it in. Okay. Lastly, our kapolina, our bolin, of course, with a half hitch, tie a secure loop at the end of the line. And here you can see our, again, our jib sheet and our pulley system. And that's how we get the line initially attached with this bolin. Here the kids are tying the jib halyard to the head of the sail. And of course, our shower bucket <laughs> here with these lovely boys taking a shower on our good ship Makani Olu which is one of our voyaging um, vessels we go on. Okay, so that's it for Kaula. If you need a refresher or you're interested, if you're a teacher and you wanna teach this with your Haumana, we have videos on our website under curriculum. You can look for Kaula or Knots and our Halau Kumana students made a bunch of videos. There's also two other Knots, Bowling on a Bite and a Clove Hitch that they'll teach on that website, on our website as well. So you can go check that out. But I think Kala is great. If you work with kids, it's a great thing, like a great like time passer. It's something that they can do with their hands. You know, it's something they can, if you teach it, they can have it at their desk. And those kids who love to play with, instead of giving them a fidget spinner, like give them a Kala, you know, and then have them practice these things. Um, I think is super important. And then just all the ways Kala can, um, be a metaphor for something, yeah? For your family, your genealogy, for the trauma that we've been through and our healing process that we're going through. Yeah, there's so many ways we can connect Kaula to curriculum and to the classroom. Um, yeah, okay, so that's all from me. So we're gonna go now into this other awesome thing, which is Pafu, and I'm gonna let Kahapea get on with that. Okay. Anybody have questions about Kaula before we move on? I'll you guys wait. can unmute too if you want to say. Yeah. yeah we can hear other people's voices if you want to ask a question. <laughs> yeah. Any questions right now before we move into Pafu? Ole? 
Okay, awesome. Um, but if you have questions, especially during this PAFU time, we want it to be a little bit more uh, interactive, hopefully. Otherwise, Mahe and I can just pretty much talk forever because we've been doing lots of Zooms the last couple of years, so we're pretty good at it. Um, but I'm going to share with you folks a little bit about the PAFU. The PAFU is a Micronesian star compass. So if you look on this slide that Mahe has now, um, on the right there is Papa Mao. Uh, teaching the PAFU to some uh, young boys in Sarawa. And, um, and so, you know, I learned the PAFU from Mao when he was here in Hawaii, uh, when we were sailing on the Makali'i. And um, it really is the primary source. It's one of their foundational tools of navigation. And so just like you see in this picture here, um, the children would learn this from maybe age three, four, up to maybe five or six. And by that, that young age, by the kindergarten age, they already have it memorized. And so first you learn, what, we're, I'm, what I'm gonna um, share with you folks is that very first lesson of learning the PAFU, which in my understanding means to count the stars, and it's gonna lay, lay out that part. And then there's many levels after where this one singular foundational lesson can go up to many different levels as you gain, as you study more, as you become more familiar with the ocean, sailing and voyaging. So one of the things that Mao shared, you know, over the years that he was teaching was um, this concept or this idea of give me your sons. You know, he told Nainoa, and um, Shorty that they were too old. They were already in their 20s when they started, early 20s when they started learning uh, navigation, which you know normally we think that's still pretty young. But what Mao was referring to was that in uh, their traditional way, they start learning from birth. And the first teacher is the mother and the women uh, in their culture know, all, even though they don't, they're not navigators, they don't go to sea, they actually know all of the knowledge through the chants and the stories. And so when the babies are small, um, all of those melee that they're singing to the kiki when they're in the womb, when they're newborns, and then growing up are all these navigational knowledges. Um, all, all the navigational like uh, recipes are inside these songs. And so that's why Mal said, give me your sons, because they start teaching uh, this knowledge at such a young age. And so the PAFU is one of the first uh, lessons that you would learn as a young person, or even now as an adult um, who wants to learn more about navigation. And so I'm going to share with you, uh, we're actually going to go to see these tricks that we learned during COVID. Um, I'm gonna turn on this other, and then let me know if it's-, it's um, what? Krista, could you make Ka's phone a uh, co-host? Cause I think I can, oh, I have it. No, never mind. I see it. Add spotlight. Okay, wait, let's try that again. Does that um, work? Wait, wait, almost, almost there. Spotlight for everyone. There we go. Can you everyone see yeah, that? I can see it. Okay, this okay. is because I can see it. So I'm gonna sit down here, and everyone can see. So can you guys hear me? Hard to hear a little bit. Hard to hear a little bit. Okay, I gotta just talk more loud, I guess. Okay, so maybe I can do it like this. When we um. When Mao teaches the compass, just like in that picture we saw earlier, it's done like this, yeah, on a low, usually on a low hala mat or on a mat of some sort. And the important thing is, is that when you teach this, it always has to be uh, oriented in its true self. So if, if this is east, this gotta be pointed east. I cannot, even if I'm inside, my house, I have to make sure that this is still aligned correctly. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to go around and I'm going to say the name and then you guys are going to repeat after me and then make do can I get one volunteer to unmute. Oh, you guys are a hard sell. Okay, come on somebody. Otherwise, I gotta make my hair do it. 
Maya, are you frozen? Okay. I'm here. Okay. Maya is going to do it. Maya is going to do it the first round, but we're going to go over it a couple times. So I'm going to hopefully have a volunteer by the second round. Okay. So we're going to start here. <clears throat> so it's I say, um, I say, you say. Tan my lap. Tan my lap. Tan payer. Tan payer. Tan earlier. Tan earlier. Tan sadapool. Tan sadapool. Tan to more. Tan to more. Tan masario. Tan masario. Tan lub. Tan lub. Machemes. Machemes. Wooly wooly lub. Wooly wooly lub. Machemalito. Machemalito. Tupul lub. Tupul lub. Tupul masario. Tupul masario. Tupul to more. To pull to more. To pull out of pool. To pull out of pool. To pull earlier. To pull earlier. To pull payer. To pull payer. To pull my lap. To pull my lap. To pull payer fang. To pull payer fang. To pull ul. To pull ul. To pull marigat. To pull marigat. To pull mern. To pull mern. To pull igalig. To pull igalig. To pull my uh. To pull wailer. To pull wailer. To pull my lip pile fang. To pull my lip pile fang. Wooly wooly fish mung it. Wooly wooly fish mung it. Tan my lip pile fang. Tan my lip pile fang. Tan wailer. Tan wailer. Tan igalig. Tan igalig. Tan mern. Tan mern. Tan marigat. Tan marigat. Tan ool. Tan ool. Tan pile fang. Tan pile fang. Tan my lap. Tan my lap. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Mahia. So as we went around, did anybody notice anything as we were saying? Oh, you guys is hard. You guys is more hard than our high school kids. Can type in the <laughs> chat. Oh, some repeat. Okay, my kai, mahalo, some repeat. Very good. Anything else? I never heard that. So I was like, oh, I better pay attention. <laughs> He's getting called on. Yeah. And, you know, of course, our Micronesian is probably terrible, but we try our best. And that's the main thing. Like, Mesaru, Mesaru says yeah. Placito, not Mesaru. Okay, good. Repetition in the beginning of the words. Very good. Those are good uh, kilo, good observations. You okay. can say tan, tan. You know, it's tan and then the. Next. Tan and tupu, very good. So uh, tan is rising, tupu is setting. So if we look here, right? Tan my lap, tupu my lap. Everything on this side to here is the rising. Everything from here, wuli wuli fushmanget to wuli wuli look, this side is setting. So tan gives us indication that it's on the Eastern hemisphere to pull Western hemisphere, right? So the rising and the setting. Okay, very good. A repetition, yes. Everything that's on this side in the Eastern hemisphere comes over to this side and it's repeated. There's only one place down here where it's a little different. This was tan love. Matcha mess, willy willy love, matcha malito, and tupo love. These one, two, three, four, five positions. These are all the same constellation uh, that we know as the Southern Cross. It's just in the different positions. So when the Southern Cross is um, rising, I don't know if I should do it here or on my other one. But anyway, when the Southern Cross, it looks like a T, right? Or like an old kite. When it rises, it's laying down. So that would be tan love. And then when it's at a 45 degree, it's tupul uh, machames, straight up and down. It's right here. This is wooly wooly love. And then as it starts to set, it's going to be machamalito. And then when it's laying down on its side, then it's in this position, tupul love. So these five. Place it five representations of the coral is all for the same star. And then all of the rest of them just rise and then they set on this side. 
and there's 32 total. So when uh, Mao came to share this knowledge, um, this was the primary source. And then Nainoa Thompson eventually created the modern Hawaiian Kukulu Kalani star compass based off of Papa Mao's compass. But the difference is that um, the, the Pafu is not equally spaced out, right? So you see how it's presented here? And then um, you see how it's presented here with the coral? Of course, the coral is all organic, so it's all shaped differently. But in general, it's about the same distance from each other. But in reality, it's not. So of course, these stars, the Southern Cross end, are closer together. Um, some stars like Wuli Wuli Fushmange and Maile Karifong and Wailur are very close together because that's the North Star, the Small Dipper, and then the Big Dipper. Um, so things are not, you know, it's nature, right? So it's not all exact. And so when Nainoa um, created the Kukulo Kalani, which is uh, based off of this, so it still has 32 points, but each section in Nainoa's compass is called a house. And it's an exact measured section of the horizon, right? 32, um, each house is 11.25 degrees. So it's a, it's a more of an exact thing. Whereas the Pafu is uh, more traditional. Um, what I like to say, it, it's based on thousands of years of voyaging and it's a very intuitive and indigenous tool. Okay, questions? What about Wooly Wooly Fishmonget, all the kids' favorite one? Oh yeah, so the students love Wooly Wooly Fishmonget. They call it like chicken nug. They come up with all kinds of names, chicken nuggets, whatever. Whatever helps them to memorize it is whatever they gotta do. Um, Wooly Wooly Fishmonget is the North Star. Um, and they like that one. They like Maile Paile Fong. That one's all, always a good one. Um, but they're all, so each of the coral represents a different star or constellation. And then in Nainoa's compass, the house, um, there's many stars that could live in one house. I don't know if that makes sense, but yeah. Okay, good. Good, 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 good. Um, can you send us a resource for reference for the Pafu? Yes. Um, Mahia, we have on our website, you can also Google Micronesian Star Compass and you'll come up with a bunch of resources as well, including a video of Papa Mao teaching it in the men's house on Sadawal, which I feel like I always tell my students to go there because again, primary source, they exist. That's the, the beauty of Google and of YouTube um, is that we can these things can exist for us to reference and you always want to hear it in the master's voice if you can. Um, so that is a recording that is there. Um, yeah, so the PAFU is something that we teach most of our students, um, especially the little bit older ones. Uh, and we, we require them to memorize it. And then of course, when we get to do our longer voyages, which we were doing uh, with our uh, high school students, um, then we could utilize a little bit of this in our navigation. And Mahia has up on the screen now a reference uh, to a, an already filled out one that we use with our students. And I dropped a Google Drive link. I think that file is open for anyone to view. It's not currently on our website, although we should put it on there. But yeah, you guys can use that link for sure. Okay, questions, comments. You guys want to go around one more time? Yeah? Okay, we're going to go around one more time. Do I have a volunteer now out there? A brave person? Hello. Oh, yes. Okay. I cannot see who you are. Oh, there we go. Okay. Hey, how's it? How's it? Okay. I know you. <laughs> I know you too. <laughs> Aloha. Okay, perfect. Here we go. Okay, Tan Maila. Tan Maila. Tan Fire. 
Tan Pair. Tan earlier. Tan earlier. Tan Sarapu. Tan Sarapu. Tan Tumor. Tan Tumor. Tan Masario. Tan Masario. Tan Lub. Tan Lub. Machemes. Machemes. Wooly Wooly Lub. Wooly Wooly Lub. Machamalito. Machamalito. Tupulub. Tupulub. Tupumasario. Tupumasario. Tuputumor. Tuputumor. Tupusarapur. Tupusarapur. Tupu earlier. Tupu earlier. Tupu payer. Tupu payer. Tupu mylap. Tupu mylap. Tupu payafon. Tupu payafon. Tupu ul. Tupu ul. Tupu mariga. Tupu mariga. Tupu mern. Tupu mern. Tupu uh, oh tupu igalib. Tupu igalib. Tupu wailer. Tupu wailer. Tupu mile pilefong. Tupu mile pilefong. Wooly wooly fish monkey. Wooly wooly fish monkey. Tan mile pilefong. Tan mile pilefong. Tan wailer. Tan wailer. Tan igalib. Tan igalib. Tan mern. Tan mern. Tan maligab. Tan maligab. Tan wool. Tan ul. Tan payafang. Tan payafang. Tan maila. Tan maila. Excellent. Very good. Mahalo, cuz. Yeah, mahalo. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Awesome. Um, I guess maybe a couple of things I'll talk about. You can see that these vein directions are connected with these pieces of senate or aha. And if you count, right, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Those represent the eight winds. Yeah. And then also, if you look, there's pieces of lauhala here. Normally, they would do it with a, a coconut frond. But this was in the Bishop Museum, so we had to dry everything first. But these eight pieces here represent the swells. So there's always eight dominant swells in the ocean all the time, even if they're super micro small, like you can't even barely see them, but they're always there. And then we always represent with the va'a, this little va'a in the middle. So when we look at the swell, if there's a swell coming from my lap, the swell is going to come from my lap and go across to tupu my lap, right? It's gonna go from tan my lap to tupu my lap. That's how the swell moves. And so the swell is gonna to come to the va'a. It's gonna pick up this little ama right here first, and then it'll pick up the hull next, and then the swell will continue on its way to tupu my lap. And so that's one of the other lessons that would come is how do the swells affect the va'a and how can you tell or keep your course um, by using the swells, right? Because daytime, there's no stars. So you're using the wind direction and you're using the swells to hold your course throughout the day. All right, questions? Mana'o. Yes, nakai evalu, ai. Call on my question. Yes. Um, with with the puffu, what is like proper protocol, like handling hand handling it? I know that we talked about um, like kala not swinging around and like hitting your friend with it. Is it the same thing? And like, are they like? I coming from like a hula background. Like I don't step over my implements. Is it same thing? I mean, it is for us, like definitely like this Pafu, um, this, this specific one that we're using with you guys today was uh, the Bishop Museum asked us to create this for one of their exhibits that they had right uh, during the time of the worldwide voyage. Um, so yeah, we malama it and we treat it, you know, it's, it's like our teaching tool. 
Um, it's also an artifact and it connects us to our kupuna. So yeah, I mean, it's not something we don't step over it. So similar to like hula or fishing implements, right? You don't step over things. Um, yeah, you treat it with respect for sure. Now you wouldn't like take this on the va'a with you, right? This is something that you memorize and you study it and then you hold it here, right? In your, your three pico kind of thing. And it's in your na'au when you sailing. Yeah, mahalo, that's a great question. Mahalo. Anybody else questions or comments? We're seeing a couple of things in the chat. Um, yeah, I think this is being recorded. <clears throat> we also have it on, like I said, you could go to YouTube and Papa Mao's doing it, which is awesome. Um, there's also a couple other videos where I think he's doing it as well. But I think it's, you know, it's really awesome that we have this primary source that we can refer back to. Um, and it's also interesting because the, the stars that are represented in the Pafu, um, like some of them we're real familiar with, like, uh, of course, the North Star, Wuli Wuli Fushmunget, um, also known in Hawaiian as Hokupa'a or Kumau. Um, so some of the stars are significant in, in uh, Micronesia are also significant to us here in Hawaii. Of course, the Small Dipper, Big Dipper, um, Iva Keli, which is Igalig, um, Marigat, of course. Marigat is Makali'i. So I, we always think that that's really awesome that they honor Makali'i. Uh, most cultures do, right? Japan, it's Subaru. Um, so most cultures uh, acknowledge uh, Makali'i or the Seven Sisters as a significant constellation. Uh, one of our kupuna, uh, Hale Makua always said that that's where we came from, that we come from the Makali'i star star um, constellation. Um, but the interesting one is uh, Hokulea is not in this uh, Pafu. Hokulea is part of their storm star, um, storm star construct, which is a whole system that the Micronesians developed to uh, do weather forecasting. And so Hokulea is one of those stars. So it's kind of interesting that it's, it's not included in the Pafu, but it's included in their other, in, in another tool. Yeah. The, they used to offer them at Imiloa in Hilo. Oh yeah, teacher, oh, they're asking about teacher trainings, um, Mahia. And I know, yes, at Imiloa, they did do some. Uh, we just piloted uh, PDE3, so if you're a DOE teacher, uh, we just piloted one of those programs um, this past year. Uh, we don't have anything in on the schedule to redo that course, but we're definitely open. We really enjoy working with teachers because we know that once you teach a teacher, then you're teaching like potentially thousands of kids after that, right? And that's really the whole goal um, and the mana'o be behind the kupa amau, right? Is to stand firm, um, of course, mau forever, enduring, but also mau our teacher and to continue his legacy. And so, yes, teaching teachers is something that Mahia and I both enjoy um, doing. Perhaps if you're not interested, oh, could we arrange? Yeah, we'd like to go Big Island. We get plenty of friends over there. Yes, now that COVID is almost done, we yes, 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 yes. Contact us. We would love to do things like that. Mahia, I think you're gonna chime in on there. Well, I was just gonna say, yeah, we don't have anything like necessarily coming up, but we definitely, you know, want to do those kinds of things. And we just have to figure out how to do that. The other thing is we're <laughs> hoping that we are gonna get more funding for a continued intern program um, over the course of the next couple of years, adult intern program. So if you're a teacher and maybe your whole school doesn't want one, but you do, that would be like a program you could look into, um, you know, follow our social media. That's where we announce those kinds of opportunities for sure. So I'll put my email in the chat and um, you can always contact me about any teacher training or curriculum as well. We are always happy to share our curriculum resources, but a good place to start is on our website. We don't have PAFU, but we do have a lot of Kukulo Kalani um, resources on there, which is the Hawaiian Star Compass. Um, and you know, we 
we like to start with PAFU with our students, but with some of our younger students, because of the languaging, we typically <clears throat> start with Kukulu Kalani, the Hawaiian Star Compass. I just think it's good though, because a lot of people just assume that Kukulu Kalani is like a traditional thing. And not a lot of people actually know that Nainoa Thompson created it and that it's based on PAFU and of course, all of his own studies and learning also um, incorporated into that. So. Yeah, I think it's a good thing to talk about. Yeah, it was fascinating to me. Uh, well, it's you know, after reading um, you know, Hawaii Rising, just to uh, just you know read step by step the way he kind of used so many resources and formulated his own approach, and that you know there's a misperception about that it you know. Yeah, just I mean that was a lot of information in that book. Not not people don't realize that it, it was actually kind of representative of a kind of a global perspective of putting all these different tools together. Yes, Mahalo. I really like how in Hawaii Rising it, it kind of goes into depth about Nainoa's process and and the Kukulo Kalani is, is really a modern genius, you know, of Nainoa and, and what a gift for everyone to learn uh, navigation. Um, I was in some conversations we had, I, you know, when we're teaching the Pafu and then we teach Kukulu, I always, you know, we always ask it, so what are some differences and some similarities that you see? And, uh, you know, my best way to, to kind of explain my own journey and I think many others is that the the kukulu gives us like a really um structured way to learn and once we can master the structured learning then it becomes more intuitive so like it goes from here and then as you practice as you practice right as you become the practitioner the knowledge slowly settles down and then when it gets to here right, then it's more of that intuitiveness. And then that's really the PAFU, right? Because the PAFU cannot exist on its own. It has to have all the knowledge, the, the mo'olelo, it has to have the oli, it has to have the storytelling as part of it. And so it's kind of like, as you become a master, then it becomes more of that traditional sense. And so, you know, huge um, mahalo and respect to Nainoa for creating the kukulu, because that's allowed many navigators to be born um, in the last 40 years that have been able to utilize that construct to learn because it is very um, it's very structured right which is a it's a good way to learn something yeah mahalo anybody else comments i think we're wrapping up the last few minutes um definitely like maya said she dropped her email uh in the chat um I am also kahapea at kanehunamoku.org. You can also find us at info at kanehunamoku.org or check out our website, social media. Um, but if you're interested in learning more um, about what we do, um, but yeah, we're just really grateful to share with you folks on this afternoon and um, share a little bit about what we do at Kanehunamoku Voyaging Academy. But yeah, if there's any other questions, if not, Mahel or Krista, I'm not sure where we're at now. Yeah, thank you so much, Mahalani and Kahapea. So much EK shared today. And we, this session is recorded. We will put it onto our website within the next couple of days. You will, you will be able to access it there. Um, we have a big ask of everyone. We do have, I am going to drop in the chat a survey link. And if you could complete that survey, we'd really appreciate that. We're always trying to improve these sessions. And if you enjoyed this session, please leave some feedback for um, our presenters and also for the summit crew that's been working so hard to bring you these practitioners with all their EK. We just really, really have enjoyed the sharing that has happened in these um, last sessions that we've had in March and in April. And we'd like to invite everybody back tomorrow. Saturday, we have three more workshops in the morning, 9 to 11. And then at 12 o'clock, we will have Kekui joining us to wrap up with Hawaii Life Ways. So yes, 
love to see you back again tomorrow on Saturday. Um, one last chance to ask these amazing women any questions or, or leave some comments before we say ahoy ho. All right. Anything, any last words, Kahapeo or Mahealani? Um, sure. I think, you know, if you're interested or in any practice that you're, you're looking into either strengthening something that you're already doing or getting into something new, it's, it's like, even though Papa Mao said, give me your sons and you got to start early, it's never too late. Um, you know, we're, we're now in this modern time, you know, information and knowledge is almost right here at our fingertips and it's on YouTube and Zoom, um, but there's nothing that is better than, you know, getting out there and learning. And so there's VA on all the different islands. So I encourage you folks to get involved um, with the VA that are in your neighborhoods or in your islands. Um, but any practice, it's so important that we keep these things, um, we keep our culture going. You know, one of Mao's other manaos that he always shared was um, make strong. And so I encourage you folks all to make strong in whatever practices um, that you're undertaking and to share that with the people that you are that you are with. And I think Mahia is going to take us live to our haumana that are coming back on the va'a right now. And that she's- There's our canoe. Uh, <laughs> but just wanted to give you guys a live view of our canoe and our um, other canoe, four-man sailing canoe that we use also Mahia Lani. But this right here is our kanehunamoku. And maybe if um, you guys could just say hi. <laughs> to our, this is our in, intern friends. Wow. Hi, aloha. <laughs> they look happy, yeah. <laughs> These guys, so lucky. <laughs> awesome. Okay, thank you guys so much. Have a wonderful weekend. Aloha. Hey, mahalo, Nui Aloha. Aloha. Mahalo, Piha. Thank you so Aloha. much. Raja. Mm -hmm. Thank you.